Okay, my imaginary little macadamia nut cookies. Today we are doing our upper body and speed day. So no running today. I'm just gonna do a little over the bench jumping stuff. Might do it from seated, we'll see how fresh I'm feeling. If I'm feeling fresher, I will start seated, and maybe step off, so a very small depth jump and jump over. If I'm not feeling as fresh, I'll just practice some jumping and then move on to upper body stuff. So yesterday, jiu-jitsu training, we went pretty ham. A friendly gym came to visit with some of their guys. They had some bigger blue belts. Obviously, I was going to have a go. So, it was fun. So, not too bad. Elbow, very inflamed today. So, I'm going to entirely do some warm-up. And going to get some soft tissue work on it. And then we're going to do our upper body hypertrophy work, which is very fun. This kind of training session, really looking forward to coming out here doing this session because it's so fun. This kind of training, it's so fun. This is so fun. There's so many sports that have hard training, hard competitions, marathon training, impossible, competition day, so tough. Rugby, field sports, all of those training is tough. Way this thing is funny, the training is so hard, but the competition day is actually very easy. You're just doing six of your lifts, warm up as fast and as efficiently as possible. Do your lifts. Mentally, it can be tough for some lifters. And then it's kind of done. But the training of weightlifting, it's so rarely fun. Often satisfying, but very rarely fun. So it's a, it's an, it's such a novel experience. I'm trying to explain this to my friends in jiu-jitsu, it's like, this kind of training is so fun. Jiu-jitsu is so fun. It's a tough sport and it's tough to be good at it. And obviously if you're training 14 times a week, trying to be professional, it's a little different, but it is very fun. So it's one of the things I really appreciate coming from weightlifting. Anyway, just a little bit inflamed. Just the back here, I really need to do some soft tissue work on it and my other rehab stuff. So without further ado, let's get the, the jumping montage going. And then I'll see you back here for the second part of the session, which is bodybuilding, hypertrophy. So we actually ended up doing some plyometric work, so some actual depth jumps. So I warmed up with the kind of fast feet movement. So there's a couple of reasons I do that. Paired it with some very moderate box jumps. So just a warm up for the actual plyometrics and just see how I was feeling that day on this session. So jumping onto the plate, fast feet, overloading the eccentric on your foot. So as you jump back down and change your direction, you jump down the fast. We fire ground reactive forces, so you change direction, put a bit of effort in, get the stretch shortening reflex going, train the windlass mechanism at the bottom of your foot. This kind of spring system down there, it's how all mammals jump. So practice that, great. A couple of people are asking about field sports and protecting your ankles. Those kind of drills are one of the couple of, one of a variety of different things you can do. So fast and accurate feet, proprioception with your feet, it trains your feet. 
let you know where they are. It overloads them with some force, and it's a way of being stabilizing that ankle under fast positions when you're not necessarily under direct control, where some of it is autonomous, which is a lot of times what happens in unexpected ankle injuries on a pitch when you're running, when we're cutting, we're changing direction, we're going back, something like this happens, we roll an ankle, it's very annoying, very, very common. You know, a lot of uh, judo, taekwondo people will know if you're moving those feet, jiu-jitsu, you can get caught up, so it's a good way of training it. There's a lot of other things you can do, but that's one of the few things you can do. So then on the depth jumps, depth jumps are fantastic, very fatiguing, three different things we could change there. So three different things I could have done to increase the intensity of the depth jump. First thing I'm focusing on all the time is not landing with my heels on the ground. I'm trying to stay on that four foot, four foot so I'm stepping off and then trying to jump as aggressively as possible. So we had horizontal distance I could have changed. I could have aimed to jump further forward in space so this would have forced me to put more work and effort in and it's an objective way of reaching an objective target if i go further i am doing more work i could have gone higher so i could have jumped higher over something or i could have had a target to reach on the roof jumping over obviously is a kind of vertical component jumping higher lets you again know that you're putting more effort in and then a third combination which is typically what most people will do with depth jumps is the jump or the height you're stepping off of increases. That is 20 centimeters maybe, maybe 15 centimeters. Very, very small depth jump. People do depth jumps from a meter, two meters sometimes. So something you want to work up to very, very diligently. But the very important thing is a lot of times when people work up to these huge heights is they'll slowly change from a really aggressive plyometric movement to landing here, end up flat footed, and then jumping off with very poor height. So we need to make sure that we're landing aggressively, really springy, and away we go, and taking off really fast and really powerful. So I'm gonna do my warm up for the upper body session. So mostly this is gonna be my tricep stuff. You actually don't even need to warm up for hypertrophy things. This is athletic. I'm trying to improve certain things, so. Uh, I'm going to do that stuff, I'll run through that, and then we'll go to the upper body work. <laughs> Funny intro, bro. <laughs> so our, for our first exercise, we're going to try to... This, really uh, this is the movement I've actually been doing, like my last vlog, and the last vlog I've been talking about was that one. That oh, then, peak week. Damn, bro, we traveled so much. Oh, that feels so good. So basically what I'm doing, soft surface, this position here, just super sensitive, soft tissue work. Do not let anyone fool you. Do not let anyone tell you soft tissue work isn't valuable. The only people I see saying that are people who are just kind of shit, people who don't train hard a lot. They're the people who I see saying like, no, it doesn't do anything. There's no empirical evidence. I know and tens of thousands, millions of athletes know when something is sore, very often, some soft tissue work helps the pain. Even if it doesn't get rid of the pain, there is a short term reduction in pain, which can often help you perform. And if you do consistently enough, sometimes there's a correlation between that pain going away. Don't, don't let anyone tell you. All of the hardest people I know train, at some point or another, have or do make use of soft tissue work. And most people, if they were a full-time athlete and had the means or you were incredibly wealthy, you would have a masseuse warming up or getting multiple massages a week. And it's just mostly people who I see, mostly people who I see saying that are people who are heavily into evidence-based training or science backing their training or backing their science with training. So it's usually those people who I see saying that. A lot of times it's physique people, a lot of times, interesting enough, it is healthcare professionals like physios and um, generally physios. And we all know how useful physios are, don't we? They've, they, uh, physios, everyone's been to a physio and they fixed your problem. Oh wait, hang on, they didn't. I'm only joking, it's a joke, it's a joke. No one get mad. But 
is often those people I see saying it. And very often, they don't train that hard themselves, a lot of times. Now some physios then obviously overemphasize too much time, soft tissue work. It's gotta be coupled with movement quality, looking at everything as a combined system, looking at you know, your day-to-day -day life, nutrition, all of that good stuff. But we don't have to throw out soft tissue work. We don't have to get rid of it just because there's no current evidence in some sections, but there is a lot of evidence depending where you look. So it's all about interpretation of the evidence. If we look at all of that, we don't have to throw out soft tissue work. We don't have to just say, okay, soft tissue work doesn't do anything. Never let anyone gaslight you into stopping you doing something if it reduces your pain, even temporarily. Don't let anyone on Instagram or anyone with a camera or someone you meet be like, that doesn't do anything. If you know something you do reduces pain, even in the short term and allows you to train, don't let them gaslight you. Don't let them fandangle you into not doing something. If it helps temporarily, there's a good chance it could help long term. Now, there might be an argument there, and it's potentially valid. If something reduces pain and then you go train more, they say you should be making the matters worse. Maybe training hurts anyway. You're going to get hurt training. If you're training hard enough, something's going to hurt. So don't let anyone fucking gaslight you into thinking that soft tissue work one form or another doesn't assist in the right places at the right times for the right stuff. It's a useful tool and don't let them, don't let them keep you down. Yo, that was polished. Uh. Okay, so this is currently the main supersets, or one of the main supersets I'm doing at the moment. It is deficit push-ups, uh, weighted plus single arm meadows rows now i'm choosing these because i don't really have any other options in the shed currently for some horizontal pressing and i love the range of motion i get on depths of push-ups from you know a hypertrophy perspective from a compromised position if we're in jiu-jitsu anywhere for on top or bottom being really strong at these extreme ranges of motion my shoulders super useful nice way to build some boobies uh, oh my nipples rock hard so single arm rows one of the main reasons i'm doing these is it feels so good on my elbow at the moment it's another way of kind of stretching and decompressing the joints and the shoulders and I just don't feel like doing barbell rows right now. Uh, I'll probably add them in at some stage, but these feel so nice, especially on this side. It feels really nice after. So I reckon there's something there and it's kind of following the principles Dr. Steph likes, which is controlled range of motion, really active and oftentimes weighted. So I'm gonna do the two of these. Do getting progressively heavier with these and yeah we'll see where we end up with the weight wise
Okay, session done. We'll see you tomorrow for snatches and squats again. And I'll get back to doing some stiff-legged stuff, hamstring work, because uh, neglected that a little bit recently. Just with the hamstring issue, just wanted to leave it alone temporarily. And uh, we're pretty good now, I think. So I'll get back to some of that posterior chain, some of that booty work. So it's a good session, bodybuilding stuff. It's fun, it's easy. It's lighthearted, psychologically requires minimal effort and it's uh, productive, makes you look sexy naked. So I should do some core work, but I will do it tomorrow instead. Of the home, you know, you spend most of your time at home. Well, when are you gonna buy another, what kind of car you have? Which, what, what kind? You have cars? Yeah, I, I How like many cars. cars. You all right? Yeah, uh, uh -huh. you know what I'm talking about. Listen, like a, a guy in a low budget, but it was a horror movie. No, it's not, but no. it's a drama movie. <laughs> well, Here's what we do, bro maximize profits and cut costs. What is the cost cut? Oh, you don't have to pay for ads. You guys are the ads. There you go. It's the Tesla model. Yeah. Elon never put an ad.
Okay, so today is supposed to be jiu-jitsu day. It's Monday night. It's supposed to be session one of the week in the gi, but I get to work late this evening, which is fine, because I had extra time with my boy this morning, which is great. I was actually editing the new show. It takes a long time to render. It's nearly an hour long, so it takes a bit of time. But not a problem, just miss jiu-jitsu. So instead of doing my upper body session tomorrow night, I'm gonna do my upper body session tonight. However, from the upper body session you just saw, I have a reasonable amount of upper back thumbs. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to not do so much back tonight. And I'm gonna focus mostly on pressing. So I'm gonna do some strict press, get a little bit more volume in on that. Nothing crazy, like 30 or 40 kilos. You know the shtick, keep it pretty handy at the moment. Then probably do some single arm landmine pressing because Steph wants to see some of those because you still need to correct the overhead stuff. Then we might do some, maybe do some floor press and then I'm gonna hit abs a little bit harder. I'm gonna work on the abs a small bit more. I think I've neglected them a little bit or rather I want to see what happens if I train them a small bit more aggressively at the moment.
Okay, so that is the hypertrophy work done. Strict press coupled with the kind of modified plate pullover for the mobility stuff. So still not quite right. The overhead position still needs more work. But that's what happens when you actively do stuff to make it work, aka shih tzu, and then neglect it for quite a period of time. So strict pressing just 30 and 40 kilos for sets of eight. So five or six sets. Then you move on to the floor press. I don't particularly like floor press. Don't really like benching. Probably a remnant of, or a current thing of, probably gonna make my overhead position work. So benching isn't something I really want to do, but I did want to try out the floor press just to see how it feels. And nice little booby pump off them, but I probably won't make those regular. Seems to, whatever reason, just kind of hurt the inside of my elbows are flared up a little bit. Just doing those doesn't really matter. The weighted push-ups are more than adequate and certainly better for a fuller range of motion in terms of hypertrophy and athletic endeavors. So then we move that to the, what did we move on to? Half kneeling press, super set it with the kind of rotational things. Again, just trying things out. So, you know, as a person and a coach and a lifter, I like to try things out. So conceptually, you can look at stuff sometimes and be like, that's stupid, but I just wanted to see a lot of throwers do these, or you see some throwers doing them. And quite a pump of the obliques. I wouldn't love them. Rotational work is really interesting because it quickly becomes a case of momentum. And for a lot of people, they're not good at regulating rotational training. So pale off breaths and other core exercises are quite useful, the side bends, you know, the rotational core work isn't the missing link in anyone's program for performance. So I wouldn't get caught up about it if you're wondering about it or if it's something you're considering. Range of motion is far more useful. Being strong and having good thoracic and lat mobility is far more useful in that regard rather than just worrying about, okay, I need to get rotationally strong. It's a, it's not a major concern. I really wouldn't zone in on it too much. So half kneeling press then because Steph was Dr. Steph Performance asked he said he wanted to see what they look like from two different angles and he said press with a vertical forearm as long as possible and i'm not sure if i really did that adequately but we'll see what he says and if we can improve on it and of course as i say i will share all of those stuff with you once we're kind of at a place where i'm happy with and we'll do a video so i know a lot of people have been asking and i will get there once we're finished i don't want to give out unfinished product any random story or few so session done Really interesting, in cold weather, as a lot of you might know, it's minus four outside now. And obviously not inside the shed, but it's not far off it. When you're in a colder climate, getting a pump is kind of difficult. So you'll get a pump, you'll get fatigued. But the quality of your pump you get when you're doing hypertrophy work just does not feel the same. It doesn't feel as productive. Like you'll reach close to failure, muscular failure, task failure, whatever you want to call it, at a certain point. Probably at a very, very similar point. You'll use similar weights, you'll do similar volume, similar rest time, but that pump you get just isn't the same. It doesn't feel the same when you get it. But you know, when you're in really warm gyms or really warm weather, it is, it is so different. So it's quite interesting. So we got those done. Core work, interesting. I'm going to be a bit more diligent with that and for practical purposes, but also for just, you know, aesthetic purposes. As I say, I'm doing a lot of this for aesthetics as much as anything. I know I'm see athletic endeavors. So... There's two hypertrophy sessions. What can you take from that? So big thing with hypertrophy is you don't necessarily need to have all of your, your stuff planned, you know, week after week after week. You need appropriate exercises and then you need a progression on those exercises and then you need a stimulus of the target muscle and then for athletes people watching this i really recommend a large range of motion across those exercises that i think is very very valuable don't really want to be from the most part limiting a range of motion when we're doing pretty much any exercise except for very specific use cases like maybe those half squats so when we're doing bodybuilding for athletes it is largely what do i need to work on so when you're an athlete, let's say we have an American football player. This is a lot of you American. We have a handoff or straight arming someone. 
a similar sometimes to rugby but not as much straight arms in rugby <laughs> mostly it's uh, the dead of you so straight arming we want strong arms we don't go okay i'm going to bring in weighted dummies into the gym and start straight arming them while running we're going to go what is going to make my arms stronger what does this motion consist of what arms or what muscles are involved in this particular so we go what motion or what muscles consists of this motion and then go arms extensors of my arms so i go triceps pecs stabilizers shoulders rear delts lats so i look at all those and i go what can i do to train those and i'll see what the ones have i done in the past what ones do i need to do now or what would i like to do now and i mess around with and then you'll come to a conclusion based on best selection maybe from a coach maybe you hear from us maybe you get seek straight app and it gives you recommendations or it gives you the program to do or you know yourself you might go look i know dips get my triceps really well i have great volume and numbers of those you know way the pull-ups are fantastic and i know single arm bench are my kind of favorite ones and then you hit those and you do whatever and that's how you go about it or if you are a rock climber and you're like i need to strive her back you don't go doing weighted rock climbing although that would probably do some way you go i'm going to do weighted pull-ups i'm going to do lap pull downs i'm going to do horizontal rows because i can progress these efficiently i can progress them consistently i can do them in a very repeatable manner so i can be sure that the progress i'm making is not based on a change in environment or angle or situation that's largely based on my capacity to produce more force over a given range of motion for that exercise and that's the whole point of athletic hypertrophy is being sure that you're progressing so hope you enjoyed today's session all about upper body is what i'll probably call this do hope you're enjoying the vlogs for you much enjoy the support in these i know it's a little bit different from the squatted vlogs and it is a hopefully a, 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 an interesting style of training i hope you're learning stuff and we will keep working on the power and the sprinting and the squatting hopefully i'll uh, keep kind of helping along with some of that information so hopefully you can put some of that to good use to yourself uh, quite a few of you seem to be doing a lot of sprinting yourselves so hopefully you're getting more from the snc stuff and then i will promise you we could get some track stuff in but it is uh it just takes a little bit more um of a setup when we're at the track because i don't want to be a dickhead so thanks for watching today's trading vlog check out seek straight app at ios and android